Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want to disappoint any of you this morning. Maybe you've heard a thought that's, that floats out there sometimes that pastors are perfect. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard that or seen someone who thinks that. The truth is, is that's not the case. I'm not perfect. Um, I, I'm just a normal person. Well, I'm a person, let's say that, and I'm not perfect. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because when I was young, it's true that I was pretty ornery. I didn't have any problem finding trouble. Um, in fact, that was kind of the way my life was until I got into college. I don't know why it changed then, but it did. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this is because one time when I was in high school, I was a part of a basketball team who pretty much the whole team got ISS. Um, and I'm not telling you this because I'm proud of it. It's, it was wrong. It was bad. I'm telling you because what my mom said to me after she found out that I had ISS is really important. My mom was the secretary of the high school, so she probably knew it before we got home uh, on the bus that we had ISS. And I told her, and she looked at me, and she, she said this. In, in summary, she said, Bryant, which is my first name, she says, Bryant, don't you know who you are? Don't you know that your actions and your words not only impact the way people look at you, but they also impact the way people see our family. And the lesson that my mother was teaching me, at least the lesson that I think she was teaching me, is your identity matters. Who you are matters. And as we read Joshua chapter 2, we see that. Our identity matters. Where you're from, what God has done, it matters. Our lesson from Joshua 2, Joshua 2 um, is really interesting because it revolves around a, a woman. Now, the, the name of the woman's not in our text, but I said it before, it's, it's Rahab. You're probably familiar with Rahab, right? As you gathered information from when I read it earlier, you realize that Rahab is not an Israelite. Right? The, the spies go over and they're, they're scoping out Jericho and they run into Rahab who provides them shelter, who hides them away from, their, from her king. And, and we know that she lives there because our lesson says that she let them down out of her window and her house, the house that she lived in, was a part of the city wall. So Rahab was a Canaanite woman. And she knew the land. You could see that with the way she says, go to the hills, stay there for three days. And then once those pursuers come back, then go. Rahab was a Canaanite woman. And it's really interesting that, that God's word is focusing, the story really focuses around her. Because as you've guessed, and she's a Canaanite woman, she is not a part of God's chosen nation of Israel. So why then would she be the center of this story? And what's even more interesting than the fact that she's a Canaanite woman is her profession. Now, if you guys know Rahab, you probably know what Rahab did for a living. And if you don't, you open up your Bibles to Joshua chapter 2. At the very beginning, um, the text identifies her as a prostitute. Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute. And I don't have to go too much into detail to tell you the way that the people of her time viewed her. Because it's very similar to the way that people of our time view prostitutes. They're, they're viewed as second-rate citizens. They're, they're, in a sense, kind of unclean, if you will. And so this story that comes to us from God's holy word, it revolves around a Canaanite prostitute. And you might think to yourself, why in the world would we be hearing a story about her? Well, the reason is, is because of what God does for her, right? Rahab, as we see her at the very beginning, she's terrified, isn't she? We, we see that from our text. She, our lesson reads, Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Right there we see that Rahab realizes there's a difference between her and God's chosen people. So we're different. A fear of, 
a fear, fear of you has fallen on us. She goes on to tell why she's afraid. She says, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. For when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shinon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed, when we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Rahab realizes that she's in a very tough spot. She's about to face judgment from the Lord, the God. The God who is above any and every other God. That's her confession. She realizes that the Lord is about to pass judgment on her and she is terrified. She probably realizes that her life has not been acceptable before God. She realizes that she doesn't fit the mold and isn't, isn't a part of God's chosen people. So she's desperate. She's looking for someone to save her. And so she turns to the Lord's people. And what's amazing is, is, as we're thinking about this question of why does this text revolve around her, um, you might get to the point where you say, yeah, she shouldn't even be there, right? She's not God's people. She's a prostitute by her living. She is completely unfit to be in God's word. And before we go that far, we just need to stop and, and think about our own identity. Because if we were to make our identity or look at how we are identified, um, I don't necessarily know if, we would find ourselves all that fit to be a part of God's chosen people. For starters, my guess is that none of us are Jews in here. Right? That means physically none of us are descendants of the children of Abraham. So there's one mark against us, which isn't really a big mark, by the way. But the second thing, that's, that's, that's where it hits us. It all depends on what we've done, right? Rahab was labeled as a prostitute because of the things that she has done. Think about it this way. What if God labeled us by the things that we have done? What would he find or what would we be called? The truth of the matter is, is there are plenty of times when we do not act the way that's befitting of God's children. There are times when, when we do not act in a manner that God would be proud to say this is his son or his daughter. Those times when anger takes control and maybe we yell at our loved ones or our kids. A time when, when maybe we, we, we can't see that God is taking care of us so we worry so much about what happens tomorrow and the next day that we totally forget what God has done for us already. Those times when we fail to listen to God and we seek out things that our Father says is not good for us. Yeah, the truth is, is oftentimes we don't act the way that's befitting of God's children. What, what if those, those, those labels were made visible to everybody else? What if God placed a billboard above our head? Rahab was labeled as a prostitute. What if God actually labeled us according to our sin? How many of us in here, if there was a billboard above our head that had our sins on it, would stay inside and never come out? Because you're afraid of what people might think of the things that you've done. It's terrifying, isn't it? The truth is, by nature, we are not fit to be God's people. By nature, we do the exact opposite of what God's children should do. And when you realize that, that's when you realize why this story is so important. Because your identity is not found in where you're from or what you have done, but your identity is rooted in what God has done for you and what he has in store for you. That's why this story is so amazing. We look at Rahab at face value, and what do we see? Canaanite prostitute. God sees more. And we know that to be true because if you were to open up your Bibles right now to Matthew chapter 1, you know, you know when you started reading one of the very first names that you would stumble across? Rahab. That Canaanite prostitute. You know what Matthew chapter 1 is? It's the line of the Savior. Our God blessed Rahab. 
so that she could be a part of the Savior's line. See, our identity is not about where we come from or what we've done, but it's all about what God has done for us and knowing that God can save us and that He does. In our story, where did Rahab turn? She turned to the Lord. She had that beautiful confession before the, before the spy. She says, For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Rahab understood that the Lord saves. And the same is true for us. When we see that our God saves us, when we see that our, our value, our identity is not about what we've done, but what, rather what God has done for us, we realize that we, we are valuable in God's eyes. We are precious. So precious that He sent His one and only Son to be our Savior so that we could live with Him in all of eternity. That causes us to realize that when we do things that are not befitting of God's children, when we, when we let our sinful nature take control, it, it should stop us dead in our tracks and we should repent and then turn to the one place that can change it all. The one place that can transform us. The one place that can save and that is the cross of Christ. That place where God took all of our failures, all of our imperfections and laid them on His Son to save us. To wash away all of the sins that, that, that we have committed. So that our billboards no longer read the sins that we have done, but rather they read son, daughter, perfect child. They read that because of what Jesus did for you. You, brothers and sisters, are forgiven. There is no sin too big. No sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. Our Father forgives you. You are His child. And that, that is your identity. And that's what moves us to love other people. That's what moved Rahab to act the way that she acted. That's why she helped the spies. Our, our lesson says that she let them down through the rope in the window. And, and then she said to them, Go to the hills so your pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there for three days until they return and then go on your way. Rahab helped those spies. And maybe you're thinking to yourself right now, yeah, pastor, but you're missing a huge part of the story, right? Rahab did that so that she could save her own skin. So that her family would be saved. What do you have to say for that, pastor? I would say no. Because God's word speaks very clearly in Hebrews 11. 30, 31, it says, By faith, by faith, the prostitute Rahab welcomed the spies because she welcomed the spies was not killed with those who were disobedient. Rahab is operating and acting out of the faith that our Lord had worked in her heart. That's why she did the things that she did. Because by faith, she realized that she was God's child. And that same faith lives in us. And it moves us then to go and tell others the amazing news, the identity that they have before God as well. No matter who they are. No matter how they talk. No matter what they look like. The truth is, is that Christ came to save all. And that's where our identity, found, our, our, our identity is found. My mom was right. Your identity does matter. It does. But our identity isn't about where we come from or, or, or what we've done, our identity is all about what God has done for us and what God has in store for us, which is an eternal home in, eternal home in heaven bought for us by Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let that be the thing that gives you hope. Let that be the thing that gives you comfort. Let that be the way that you identify yourself. And let that be the thing that motivates you to leave this building and to go out and to live for Him. Amen. Please stand.